None of us have all the answers to fixing the economy, but however, we each hold a piece of the puzzle and by coming together and sharing our ideas, we can see the issues and the solutions more clearly and with a more distinctive perspective. We're currently facing many economic difficulties in Europe, not least the fact that there are 26 million unemployed people. But as Albert Einstein said, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity, and at a European level, we've seized this opportunity to take action. We need to be effective and we need to be fast. As the Europe 2020 strategy makes clear, to overcome the current economic crisis, we need to create a smarter, greener economy with our prosperity coming from research and innovation. And that's why research and innovation are at the heart of all of our policies. Innovation must be the byword for governments, policymakers and researchers, industries and companies in the private and in the public sectors. Europe cannot compete globally on price. Our selling point must be knowledge, an excellent research base and our capacity for innovation, because this is where the new jobs lie. While five million jobs were lost in the EU between 2008 and 2010, the number of jobs in the knowledge economy increased by 800,000. The EU member states with a high research and innovation intensity, the ones in other words that spent more than 2.5% of their GDP on research and innovation in 2011, had an average unemployment rate of 6.6% in October 2012. And the countries at the other end of the scale, who invested less than 1.5% of GDP in research and innovation in 2011, their unemployment rate was more than double that of the innovation intense countries at 13.8%. Up to 2011, a majority of the 27 EU member states managed to maintain or increase their public R&D investment despite pressures on budgets. But worryingly, in 2011, fewer countries managed to do so, and overall public spending on R&D decreased for the first time since the crisis. We need to maintain R&D investments in Europe, but we also need to get better value for money. We know that the research sector is underperforming in some member states, and that some produce more science and technology excellence and innovation than others with the same investment. A top class research base is one of the biggest draws for foreign investment. In fact, foreign direct investment in R&D is holding up. The United States, which accounts for two thirds of internationally mobile R&D investment, is sticking with us. American firms invest 10 times as much in R&D in Europe per year as they do in China and India combined. So there are convincing reasons for investing in the drivers of growth and jobs, education, research, and innovation. But there isn't one simple formula. That would be too easy. But broadly speaking, successful countries offer the best tax, infrastructure, talent, and regulatory environments. They invest in R&D and education, they have vibrant investment and innovation ecosystems that encourage knowledge flows, and they embrace the role of government and the public sector as first adopters and catalysts of innovation in fields like health and transport. Whatever the formula, whatever the policy mix, the EU has the tools to help. Just over two years ago, we launched the Innovation Union flagship initiative together with the Digital Agenda. The aim, in a nutshell, is to make Europe more innovation friendly, where new ideas can be turned more easily into innovative products and services that create growth and jobs. Our innovation union, for which I'm responsible, most of our 34 commitments in that are being implemented, including on key issues such as the European Passport for Venture Capital Funds, the Unitary Patent, and modernized public procurement rules. We've set out a clear path for achieving a European research area, and we're rolling out the European innovation partnerships that pool resources and articulate supply and demand side measures around key societal challenges. 
we're making very good progress. However, we need to do more to improve the key framework conditions for innovation, starting from the area of standard setting, especially in innovative sectors and intellectual property. This will include reviewing European standardization and preparing a legal framework for intellectual property that addresses the growth agenda. A lot has been achieved since the launch of the Digital Agenda Initiative in 2010, and in December, Vice President Cruz announced a package of measures to stimulate broadband availability in Europe. This included the launching of the EU's cybersecurity strategy just two weeks ago. ICT is an open platform for huge innovation in every sector. The digital economy is growing seven times faster than the rest of the economy. The employment of ICT practitioners has been growing by around 3% per year in Europe, with the demand for labor outstripping supply. But there could be problems down the line. Supply of people with the right skills is not keeping pace. Between 2006 and 2010, the number of ICT graduates actually fell by 10%, and in a few years, Europe could face a shortage of 700,000 skilled ICT practitioners with vacancies unfilled owing to a lack of the right skills. The Grand Coalition for Digital Jobs, an EU-wide multi-stakeholder partnership, will tackle our shortfall of people with ICT professional skills. The goal is to increase the supply of ICT practitioners by 2015 so that we have enough of them in Europe by 2020. These are some of the key policy actions that we're taking and they're flanked of course by increased and better targeted investment at European level. Horizon 2020 puts the emphasis on research excellence, innovation and economic impact. This means more funding for testing, prototyping, demonstration and pilot type activities for business driven R&D, promoting entrepreneurship and risk taking and shaping demand for innovative products and services through standard setting and public procurement. Horizon 2020 will help to bridge the gap between research and the market by, for example, helping innovative enterprise to turn their technological breakthroughs into viable products with real commercial potential. The first pillar of Horizon 2020 aims to increase excellence in Europe's research base, including through a leap in support for the highly successful European Research Council. The second pillar focuses on building leadership in enabling and industrial technologies with dedicated support for ICT, nanotechnologies, advanced materials, biotechnologies, and advanced manufacturing. Reflecting the high priority that we give to the digital agenda, Horizon 2020 will also fund e-infrastructures for science, key enabling technologies such as micro and nanoelectronics, photonics, and emerging technologies. But most importantly, the role of ICT is fundamental in tackling societal challenges such as health, transport, social inclusion, and climate change. I want more businesses to apply to Horizon 2020, and simplification will make this a more attractive proposition. The program will be simpler at all levels, its overall architecture, its evaluation criteria, funding rates, rules, and controls. And to make life easier for SMEs in particular, there will be a single comprehensive program adapted to their needs, inspired by the very successful SBIR program in the United States. There will be new financing instruments aimed at innovative, high growth companies. Finance for riskier projects, as we all know, has all but dried up in Europe. So we need to fill that gap. The Risk Sharing Finance Facility, or the RSFF, has generated extra lending worth 15 times more than what we put into it. That's a very smart use of public money, so we want to build on that. 
the internet will also play a key role in how we capitalize on the knowledge created by Horizon 2020 projects. Open access to scientific publications will be the default setting in Horizon 2020. And it is, of course, the internet that makes this possible. As you know, a political agreement on the European Union budget for the period 2014 to 2020 was reached by the heads of state and government at the European Council on the 8th of this month. The summit conclusions highlighted the particular contribution of Horizon 2020 to the Europe 2020 strategy. This agreement opens the way for the Council to negotiate with the European Parliament to obtain its consent and to stay on track to launch the new programmes in 2014. A successful outcome of this process is crucial as we must offer solid, long-term perspectives to researchers and investors worldwide that will convince them that working and investing in Europe now is the right choice. From the beginning of my mandate as the European Commissioner for Research, Innovation and Science, I have felt strongly that innovation means much more than just technological innovation. The approach we're taking in both Innovation Union and Horizon 2020 embraces all kinds of innovation, social innovation, innovation in services, new business models and public sector innovation. Digital technologies and the internet are excellent examples of how technological innovation spark often unforeseen innovations and changes in the economy and in wider society. The internet is today used by three billion people and it's a marketplace of many billion euro. But that's just one part of the story. We also have to think about what this means for business processes, our public administrations, for job creation, social inclusion, more flexible working, e-skills, innovation and entrepreneurship. You have special insights on these issues and ideas that will be vital to achieving innovation union. So let us keep innovating, let us keep discussing, and let us keep working together. It is, after all, on the premise of partnership and collaboration that an innovation union is built. It is about recognizing business as the engine of innovation. It is about encouraging everyone to work together to explore new options, to share risks and spark new ideas, some of which might become the next big thing. In this innovation race, which holds the key to recovery and the key to creating jobs for people in Europe, we all need to work together and we need to do that with a greater conviction than ever before. Gora Mahagi. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner.